Hello, everybody. Welcome to our session. And uh, this is a session co presented by me and my co presenter, Yu Peng Hu. Uh, this, uh, we are talking about multi region cluster, which is uh, uh, one SWIFT cluster consists of several regions, two or more regions. And uh, uh, this is the work. This is the co-work done by Inspur. Inspur, Yu Peng is from Inspur and O Storage. I'm from O Storage. I'm software engineer from O Storage. And O Storage is a startup company that provides object storage for enterprise users. And uh, uh, this work is also uh, uh, cooperated with 99 Cloud. 99 Cloud. 99 Cloud is the OpenStack company in China. And uh, uh, due to some visa problems, uh, the guy from 99 Cloud cannot be here. But uh, we will present the work by, uh, okay, include what is done by 99 Cloud. And uh, Yu Peng will make a short, short uh, explanation, uh, short introduction for his team and uh, their work in Inspire. Okay, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I, I was uh, I was I I am very pleased uh, to have this opportunity uh, to com communicate with you. Uh, I'm, I'm com I'm, my name is Hu Yupeng, uh, coming from China. I work for Inspur. Uh, for Inspur, maybe you maybe you you don't know uh, this company. Uh, so let let me give you a brief introduce introduce about Inspur. Uh, actually, it is a big big. A big company in China. Uh, it is a, a leading provider of cloud computing solution. Uh, solution. Uh, we we are able to transfer open uh, traditional data center uh, and to the most uh, to, to the most uh, advanced uh, cloud data, cloud computing data, data center. Uh, actually, it uh, has has risen up to international ranks. Uh, According to Gartner, uh, our server sales has uh, uh, has achieved number five in the world, number one in China. Uh, uh, uh focus on research and uh, devel development. Um, uh, my team, my team is mainly responsible for developing a cloud uh, cloud computing platform. Uh, actually, we uh, we have developed a, a cloud computing platform uh, which was called in cloud OS uh, based on uh, OpenStack yeah okay uh, so uh, in fact Inspire is a very large IT company in China and uh, uh, their their servers their servers X L6 servers are very popular in China and uh, maybe you know the Baidu Ali and uh, Tencent uh, use many many Inspur servers and uh, storage systems. So um, back to Swift. Back to Swift. Uh, first of all, let me make to, uh, make a very short introduction of Swift, which was also introduced in the uh, in the session before. In the session before, uh, and Swift is born or was born at the very beginning of OpenStack. Now OpenStack have uh, tens and hundreds of projects, but at the very beginning, there are only two projects. One is Nova, and the other is Swift. And Swift provides object storage services, and uh, it can run on very large scale. Uh, in Rackspace, in Rackspace, there is uh, uh, the store uh, hundreds of petabytes data of data in Swift clusters, and uh, Swift can also pro provide very high durability, very high scalability, and very high availability. So it is a, a very good storage system, very good storage system, and uh, uh, can run at a very large scale. And uh, Swift, we say, it provides object storage services. So what is object storage? This, uh, it is a little confusion sometimes. For example, we say, 
uh, sometimes we say that uh, Ceph is based on Redos. Redos is an uh, object storage system. And uh, we also say that Ceph provide object storage service. So uh, in, in other contexts, we also hear uh, object storage here, object storage there. But, but the, the, meaning, the meaning is a little different. Uh, when, we talk about, when we talk about Swift, when we talk about Swift and when we talk about uh, uh, Ceph provide object storage service, we mean that this object storage is Amazon S3-like, S3-like storage. Okay, uh, two, uh, two uh, key features of this kind of storage, which is the first of all, uh, data are stored in buckets or containers. In Amazon S3, we call it buckets, but in Swift, we call it containers. containers. Uh, we don't use directories in file system. In file system, we use directories, but not in object storage. The other uh, main feature of this kind of storage is that it talks on, it talks in the uh, web language, the internet language, which is HTTP. HTTP. So uh, we access to data, we read data, write data via HTTP calls, but not uh, in, for example, in file system we use uh, f write, f read, these functions. We do, we do not do it in object storage. In object storage, we can visit storage system via HTTP. So uh, millions, of, millions of cell phones, millions of uh, desktop PCs can access directly to our storage system via internet. So it is, this, is, uh, uh, this is awesome. This is, a very, this is a very good feature that storage system can provide very high concurrency uh, and, uh, uh, to our clients, to our clients. So, um, uh, in, in Swift, let's uh, see how we can access, we can access data. In, first of all, in Swift, we use containers, but we also have account. Account is related to tenant. So uh, when you are a user of a tenant, for, for example, tenant one, and the administrator, the administrator or uh, can configure the Swift system that uh, for tenant A, for tenant A, they use, for the users in tenant A, they use account A. So uh, when you log in, you can see container one, container two, and container three. You do not see account. You do not, do not see account because uh, it is configured uh, directly related to tenant. And uh, uh, there is another container called container one and under account B, under account B. Container one, there is a, a container named container one in account A, and there is another container named also container one in account B. There are two containers. The, the storage space are isolated logically. So, uh, uh, so when, when a user log, uh, when a user visit, uh, when a user access to Swift, he can only see containers, but do not see, uh, do not see account, do not see account. And uh, if we, in fact, in the API, we can see it, you can see it. If, uh, if a user in a, uh, if a user of tenant A, and uh, he access to this storage system, and uh, he can list all the containers, all the containers his tenant can access to via this HTTP core. Uh, so I use a curl command here, and uh, uh, it was written container one, container two, and container three, okay, as, uh, in the body of the response, in the body of the response. And uh, uh, if we, if we uh, make this core, he can see the two objects under container one in container one, the two objects in container one. Uh, however, if he, uh, if he use another URL, for example, uh, account A container four, account A container four, he will get uh, 404 object, uh, resources not found. This is uh, the basic way to access data in, in Swift. We use get to read the data and we use put to upload, upload objects 
or create containers. And uh, we can also use post to modify the metadata of a container or an object. And we can use delete. X delete, use the delete action to delete objects or containers. So this is the best way to uh, access to Swift storage. And uh, uh, how Swift implement object storage under the hood? In Swift, we have some services such as proxy servers and uh, uh, three storage servers. Three storage services called account server, container server, and object server. The node, the nodes run proxy server, we call it proxy node, and the node run account server, container server, and object server, we call it storage server, a uh, storage node, sorry, storage node. The data is stored on storage node, nodes. And proxy server or proxy node provide HTTP APIs for the users and make authentication, make authentication to verify if this user have the, uh, have the, uh, can be per permitted to access to the data. It is also done on proxy nodes. Uh, it can be integrated with Keystone, which is also another project in OpenStack. Now, what is MRC, multi-region cluster of Swift? Multi-region cluster of Swift is the uh, cluster consists of more than one region. Uh, usually, the regions are located in different data centers, in different data centers, or even in different cities. We will show uh, our experiment uh, in Langchao Cloud Lab that uh, uh, the test result of multi-region uh, deployment of Swift one, one uh, region in uh, Zhengzhou and another region is in Jilan. There are two cities in China and uh, the distance between them are more than 400 kilometers. So uh, there are two regions, one and two. And uh, the regions are connected via uh, what we call it replication network. Uh, the requests are coming, uh, the requests user requests, HTTP requests to read and write data come into, come into the uh, different, I'm sorry, come into different regions from different users and to write and read data. And the data are synchronized. Data between two regions, between different regions are synchronized via the replication network. Replication network, one advantage of this MIC deployment or, or multi-region clusters of SWIFT is that uh, the, data, uh, the data are stored with multi, uh, multiple, uh, replicas, multiple replicas. So, so when one region is done, one region, for example, uh, a data center is, is done due to power loss or, uh, or some uh, disaster, for example, earthquake, uh, one, one region is done, but we can still access to our data. We can still read them and write them. And, and so this provides very high reliability and durability for our data. So uh, for an uh, administrator or for, for a deployer, how can he, how can he or she to uh, implement or deploy a uh, multi-region cluster with Swift, it is very easy. It is very easy. The key point is that when we build the rings, build the rings. So ring is the uh, data is 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 the data that uh, is the implementation of consistent hash. So Swift use ring to distribute data across the devices in a cluster. So we only what we need to do is to tell to tell Swift that we have devices in multi regions when we build the ring we build the ring so these are the commands when we build when we build rings uh, we can see that some some devices are belong to region 1 that uh, is indicated by uh, r1z1 r1z2 and r1z3 and uh, some devices be belong to region 2 that is indicated by uh, 
R2, Z1, R2, Z2, for example. And uh, <coughs> then Swift will know how to, uh, how to distribute the data. He will distribute data with uh, uh, as unique as possible. As unique as, as possible, that is, for example, when we store data with four replicas, one, one piece of data, three repli uh, four replicas, four replicas, he will store two, replica, two replicas in region one and two replicas in region two as unique as possible, as unique as possible. They distribute data as distributed as possible. So, um, uh, but in real world, uh, sometimes the user do not need to store all data across different regions because uh, multi-region means the cost. So a single region means less cost. So um, in real world, some, some, some users do not need to store all data across different regions, across different data centers. So uh, the deployer, deployer or the administrator can provide different storage policies in one MRC. In one MRC, in one cluster with different storage policies. Uh, it is very similar to, uh, to some storage system that call it storage pools. So, so this storage policy in Swift is uh, similar to storage pools in other storage systems. Uh, for example, this cluster, in this cluster, we provide three different storage policies. Some data are, store, are stored in two regions with four replicas. And there is another, you can see there is another uh, policy to store data in, or with, with only three replicas. Three replicas in one region. Three replicas in one region. And uh, uh, there is a, uh, uh, yet another policy that uh, store data on SSDs to, uh, to provide a better performance. Uh, the user can choose policies from them, but uh, we need to be careful that this, these policies, we need to be careful that, that these policies are only applicable to object data. So object, object data, uh, we, we can see that here. We can see that in Swift, we, except for object data, we also have account data, account information, and uh, container data, which uh, provide containers or store container information. But storage policies, Storage policies can only apply to object data. So in a multi-region deployment, in a multi-region cluster of Swift, we always store container information and account information across different regions. This is uh, about, uh, uh, this is about uh, multi-region cluster. And, uh, uh, in multi-region clusters, Swift, uh, uh, or, or in, in Swift, in Swift, they use, uh, uh, we use, or the Swift use, I'm sorry. The Swift use the quorum protocol with write data. That means when you store data with, four, with three replicas, when you write data into Swift, he, uh, it will confirm you that the write is successful until two of them are successful written into the storage nodes. And uh, uh, when we use four replicas, when we use four replicas, the Swift will confirm our writes when three of them are successfully written to the storage nodes. So the problem is when, so the problem is, uh, in MRCs, we need to, to write one of the three replicas, uh, two of the three replicas in region one, and two of the three, uh, and one of the uh, replica in region two. Okay. Okay, I, I, I'll say, say it again. Uh, because we need, because Swift need to write three replicas of the four, successfully then to confirm the right. So when a request come into region one from the proxy node in region one, 
it will confirm the right successfully. It will confirm the right successfully when one of the uh, when two of the replicas write in the storage no nodes in region one, and at least one of the two replicas successfully write to the storage nodes in region two. So they will write across regions. They'll perform write across regions. And uh, uh, usually the connection between data centers or, de or, regions, or regions or even different cities are very uh, are slower than the connection between different nodes in one region, apparently. Okay, uh, especially when these data centers are in different cities, the, uh, the connection are even, even more slower and uh, the delay are uh, longer, the speed, uh, uh, the speed are slower. So um, it will be the bottleneck, the re replication network will be the bottleneck of this storage system. So how to solve this problem? Swift provide affinity. Affinity uh, include write affinity and read affinity. This affinity is configured in uh, the proxy nodes, in the proxy nodes. For example, uh, for example, we can, config, uh, we can write a configuration in the proxy server.conf. In the, for the proxy node uh, here. And uh, uh, after, that, after that, when this proxy node receive a request to read the data, he will pick the rep replica in locally, because the replica locally, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, pick one from region one, and will not visit region two, will not access that data, uh, provide data from, read data from region two. So uh, this is the right affin aff affinity. Without read, read affinity, Swift will, uh, will pick one replica randomly. So uh, maybe this rep replica will come from region one, and maybe this replica will come from region two. But with read affinity, the proxy server will always, put, always pick the replica from his local region. If it fails, if it fails due to, uh, uh, sometimes the data is corrupted, sometimes the device is uh, broken, or, or some other reasons, when it failed to pick the replica from his local region, from its local region, then he will uh, read across, read the data across the network between regions. So uh, it, it will still provide very high availability for our data. And uh, uh, for writes, for writes, write affinity makes that if the proxy node here uh, received a write request, write request, or for example, a put to put data into this Swift cluster, he will uh, write data locally and synchronize the data across the replication network to the other region. So this is very interesting because uh, uh, we said that for a, for a write, the, because of Quorum protocol, for a write the, with four replicas, uh, Swift will confirm the write successfully until three of the replicas are successfully write to the storage nodes. But here, we only have two replicas in one region, in region one. So how the, uh, how the write affinity works? Because uh, it writes all of the four replicas into region one, and move and move uh, two of them to region two, asynchronized. So 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 four of them will. So we also store Swift. We also store uh, four replicas of the data in uh, when you uh, when you enable write affinity. When, you know, so you do not to worry about uh, the data duration uh, when you enable write affinity. Uh, this, this affinity will, uh, will improve the performance very much. Uh, and uh, Yu Peng will introduce our experiment in Langchao Cloud Computing Laboratory. OK, okay well, let's you, look you, at you see, do, do you need to see this? Oh, no. Oh, okay. okay. Let's look at, at the uh, te our test environment. Here is the 
uh, development topo topology. Uh, we have a data center in Jinan city and uh, Zhengzhou city. They are, uh, the distance between, uh, between two cities is more than uh, uh, 400 kilometers far. Uh, and uh, um, there, there are two servers in Jinan, in Jinan and uh, each server ha have, two, have eight disks to made up a zone. And uh, uh, in Zhengzhou, there, there are four. There are four servers, and uh, every, two, every two servers uh, have eight disks to make up a zone. Uh, there, there, there are the same, same, number, uh, same number of zones in Jinan City and Zhengzhou City uh, to make a four replicas. replicas. Um, we, we, uh, we use uh, every server have two NICs. One, pro one provides uh, test networks uh, for clients. Uh, the other one provides uh, provide, uh, communication between proxy server and uh, storage server. Um, uh, and also provides the replication network uh, which is connected by VPN. Uh, across across the region to sync data in the background. Um, okay, uh, please next. Thank you. Uh, let's look at look at the experimental results. The results. We set object size to 20, uh, 20 kilobytes um, by using uh, 10, 20, 40, 80, uh, 200, 250 uh, con uh, concurrent. Con concurrent uh, uh, read and a uh, concurrent write, uh, and uh, uh, f 150, 250 uh, write, uh, read uh, to test with affinity and uh, not affinity. Uh, we get a uh, we get maxi maximum maximum and average delay. Like like uh, the data is uh, show on the picture. Uh, and, and this is the read. This is the read. Uh, re this is the right. This is the result of read of operator operation. And the, the next is the result of the writer. This uh, is the read. This is read. The, oh yeah. This is oh, sorry. Uh, this, uh, this is the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is right. Uh, this is the result of write operation. From the chart, we uh, we can see that uh, the mm, uh, we can see that, uh, the Swift uh, with uh, Affinity is enabled is uh, can e can e can effectively improve read and write performance uh, uh, be, uh, on on the, on the MRC, on MRC, especially read performance. Yeah. Okay. That's that's all. Thank you for your time. Okay. Uh, not French. That I I add. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have more to explain that. So, uh, so you can see that with with affinity enabled, it's, it improved the performance extremely, but uh, it, it seems uh, uh, very good. But but actually, in fact, we need to take care of some things. We need to take take care of something uh, because because why Swift is uh, can run on very large scale. Why Swift uh, uh, can uh, deploy in uh, deploy with multi regions easily. Uh, one uh, the important one important thing we should know that is the eventually consistency. Eventually consistency. Swift is the eventually consistency storage system, not immediate consistency. Uh, in uh, we should uh, we should be careful of this. We should be careful with this, especially when we uh, to do multi-region cluster, multi-region deployment, because uh, uh, in if 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 there is only one region, if the only only one region, the consistency will achieve very quickly. But if we have uh, two or more regions and they are connected via connected on uh, with one with one with the in or even with internet uh, with the VPN over internet the 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 connection between different regions will be slow and also the uh, the consistency the 
also Swift will spend more time to achieve consistency. So um, if we if we enable right affinity, if we never uh, as we talked before, Swift will write will write four replicas into region into one region and move two of them in the background in the background asynchronously to the to the other region. So uh, so it will spend some time to move the data, some time to move the data. This will make uh, inconsistency when uh, inconsistency when uh, we we to uh, modify our data, modify object. Uh, for uh, because because in object storage systems we do not have random writes. So to modify an object, it means to upload an object and overwrite the existed one. So um, when we overwrite the objects, we put data into, for example, where uh, a proxy node in region one, in region one, it, the data comes into region one and uh, with write affinity, he, he Swift writes four of them, four of the replicas in region one, and to move two of them uh, in the background. But now there is read coming to region two. He will, he will read, he will get the, uh, the, the uh, dirty data, the older version. So, so this should be, uh, be careful, especially when we delete data, we delete objects. We delete objects in one region and, and a write comes into another region and he finds, uh, and uh, the, the client will get data which is deleted. Why? Because eventually consistency. This will even happen when, when the writes and the reads come from uh, come into one region. This is uh, this is weird, but uh, but it is true because why Swift can implement can implement uh, uh, write affinity because in Swift, for example, we store one one piece of data into this cluster. With, with four replicas, and uh, the Swift, according to the ring, he will pick four devices. Four devices. Uh, we say four disks to store the four uh, the four replicas. Uh, but actually, Swift will also pick up four. The number is uh, uh, equal to the number of replicas. We'll select four handoff devices, which means uh, by the name handoff. It means uh, that if two of, uh, if uh, if uh, if the device, if one of the four devices mentioned before failed, he will write the data to the handoff device, and there are four there are four uh, devices, uh, there are four primary devices to store data and four handoff devices to uh, store the data when the primary device uh, failed. So. So uh, there are four kind of devices in, in, in one region, uh, respectively. So uh, when the right affinity enabled, actually Swift write data like this. He writes two replicas into two primary devices in region one and write two replicas into the handoff devices in region one. So uh, when you read, they also perform like this. I read data from uh, from devices. If failed, I read data from handoff devices. So uh, when we delete data and the, when we write data into this cluster and uh, read it immediately, we can get the data. But immediately from two regions, we can also get the data because in region two, if we cannot find the data locally, we we will, uh, it, Swift will read the data remotely from region one and prov provide the data to the user. And, uh, uh, and Swift move the data in the background. But now a delete request come into region one and it will delete, it will delete the data in the four, in the four replica, uh, in the four primary replicas. Please be careful here because he will delete the data in the four primary replicas. He will not delete the data in the handoff in the handoff devices. Swift delete data in handoff devices uh, re rely on the 
uh, replication, uh, replication services. Replication services will find, okay, this, this data on handoff devices is, is, should be deleted. So the replication services in the background will delete the data, but not by the request, but not by, by the user requests coming to this system. So, so, so you can see, uh, when you write data into the, the mouse region cluster with the right affinity and uh, you, you, you delete them immediately, there are four replicas left on the handoff devices in region one. So when you perform read now, in spite of uh, uh, from region one or region two, you can always get the dirty data, which uh, is should be deleted, but but not, but not deleted immediately. So uh, it is it is weird that we perform when when you uh, it is it is sometimes weird that uh, when we enable write affinity, we put data in uh, from the region one. We send write uh, put requests to write a data write an object into region one, and uh, we we then immediately we delete this object. And we read again, we delete, put successfully, delete successfully, and we read. We read, we, we, we expect to get 404 resources not found to make sure this data is deleted, this object is deleted. But we get the data, we read it successfully, and we wait for about, uh, for example, for a minute, for a minute or, or uh, several seconds, and we read again, we get 404. So uh, this is this should be careful because the inventory consistency that uh, it will perf sometimes it will act like this, like this, uh, and and we should also point that uh, read affinity read affinity can take a, uh, can affect uh, all of the operations, all of the read uh, read operations to account to container to object, but write affinity only affect object put. So if you want to modify, if you want to delete, if you want to delete an object, uh, it will not affect by write affinity as we mentioned before. And if you want to update the metadata of object, it was also not affected by write affinity. So you will spend more time than you expected to, uh, to modify the metadata of object. So, so this should be a, uh, pay attention to when you uh, when you enable affinity. So uh, sometimes we we do not enable right affinity. Sometimes we do not uh, uh, enable right affinity to uh, uh, but 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 the read affinity is always what you want. So uh, this is uh, what uh, uh, what we want to present about uh, uh, multi cluster Swift. Uh, Multi-region Swift cluster. Multi-region Swift cluster. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, maybe we have two minutes. Uh, any questions? One question. No question. Good. So with the copies okay. going to the handoff locations. Is it the object replicator process that's responsible for delivering those to the second region then? When uh, it makes its round, uh, the Swift object replicator, is that the process that does the eventual move to the remote region? So, uh, so the question is uh, when with uh, mount regions, uh, mount regions, the, the, the replica is yeah, so right, right if, to the other region. If, if you've got the affinity set up and it all goes into one region, okay. but two of them are the handoff locations. Yeah, yes. Um, is that handled the same as like if you've got one region and a drive failure where it goes to the handoff location? Yep, yep. And then it's the object replicator process that eventually crawls the directory structure and says, oh, you're in the handoff, you need to move to region two? Yep. Okay, so it's that process doing the relocation. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. 